what happens when you take the largest flying animal that ever lived and give it the neck of a bulldozer? You get one of the most controversial predators in paleontology. Hatsagopteryx had a skull, reaching up to eight feet long, supported by cervical vertebrae so reinforced that they could withstand massive impact forces. But here's what makes paleontologists argue this giant pterosaur wasn't hunting like its relatives. While other Ozdarkids were elegant probe feeders, Hatsagopteryx had evolved into something that would dominate the ground in places where large theropods like T-Rex were completely absent. The story of how scientists discovered this extraordinary predator begins with a case of mistaken identity that would baffle researchers for decades. During a student dig in the late 1970s, fossil hunters working in the Ha Egg Basin of Romania uncovered bone fragments unlike anything they had seen before. The massive skull pieces emerged from the densest Sayula formation, their sheer size immediately capturing attention. These weren't ordinary fossils, the fragments displayed an unusual thickness and weight that seemed excessive even for the largest known predators of ancient Europe. Scientists initially classified the enormous bone pieces as belonging to a giant theropod dinosaur. The logic seemed sound at first glance. The robust construction and massive scale suggested a powerful land predator, something that could have dominated the late Cretaceous landscapes. The holotype specimen cataloged as FGGUBR1083A consisted of two skull fragments and a damaged left humerus that reinforced this early interpretation. The bones proved troublesome for paleontologists attempting to place them within known European dinosaur families. Their proportions didn't match established theropod patterns, and their reinforcement structures seemed engineered for forces beyond typical predatory requirements. The fragments showed a peculiar, spongy internal texture, more akin to a battering ram than the hollow bones expected in most dinosaurs. When researchers examined the bone microstructure using advanced imaging techniques, they discovered hollow spaces and pneumatic features that challenged the theropod classification entirely. These characteristics pointed towards something completely different, a flying reptile rather than a terrestrial dinosaur. The associated humerus and a later discovered femur fragment provided additional evidence that something extraordinary had lived on this ancient island during the Maastrichtian period. The discovery of the femur midsection specimen FGGUB Aries Taino 25 suggested that even smaller individuals reached substantial proportions with estimated wingspans of 16.4 to 19.7 feet. This reinforced growing suspicions that these fossils represented something unprecedented in pterosaur evolution. The creatures defied conventional expectations for both flying reptiles and island fauna. The bones were eventually reclassified as belonging to Hatsagopteryx tumbema, a, a pterosaur with anatomical features unlike any other known flying reptile. The generic name references the Hay Egg Basin discovery site, while tumbema derives from Greek meaning terror or monster. This reclassification revealed how the unique island environment had shaped one of the most unusual predators in Earth's history, setting the stage for understanding an apex predator that operated by rules entirely its own. 70 million years ago, Ha Eji Island existed as an isolated landmass surrounded by deep marine waters separated from mainland Europe by at least 124 miles of ocean. This geographic isolation created one of the most unusual ecosystems in Earth's history, where evolutionary forces operated under completely different rules than those found on continental landmasses. The island hosted a collection of dinosaur species that defied expectations with most large animals, evolving to become dramatically smaller than their mainland relatives. The Titanosaur Megarosaurus dacus provides a perfect example of this phenomenon. While its continental cousins could reach lengths of 98.4 feet or more, Megarosaurus grew no larger than modern elephants at approximately 19.7 feet long. These weren't juvenile specimens either, bone chemistry analysis confirmed. These were fully mature adults that had evolved smaller body sizes over millions of years. The Hadrosaur Telmetosaurus followed the same pattern, shrinking from the massive proportions typical of duck-billed dinosaurs to a more compact form suited for island life. Rhabdodontids, like Zalmoxes, also adapted to the island's constraints by reducing their body size significantly compared to their European mainland relatives. The discovery of Transylvanosaurus platycephalus 
added another member to this collection of diminutive dinosaurs proving that the trend toward dwarfism was widespread across multiple dinosaur lineages. Limited food resources and reduced predation pressure made smaller body sizes advantageous for survival on this restricted landmass. Yet the absence of large theropod dinosaurs created an ecological vacuum at the top of the food chain that would be filled in an unexpected way. Traditional apex predators like massive carnivorous dinosaurs simply couldn't reach this isolated island, leaving an open niche for a different kind of hunter. The island's unique environmental pressures created selective forces that would favor an entirely different evolutionary strategy. While every other large animal was shrinking to survive on limited resources, one species was evolving in the opposite direction. Hatsagopteryx experienced island gigantism, growing larger and more robust than its mainland pterosaur relatives. This evolutionary divergence allowed it to exploit the abundant population of dwarf dinosaurs, becoming the dominant predator in an ecosystem where the usual rules no longer applied. The result was a world where giants became dwarfs, and a flying reptile became the ultimate terrestrial killer. The seventh cervical vertebra of Hatsagopteryx, cataloged as EME315, reveals anatomical features that fundamentally changed how scientists understood pterosaur predation. While giant Ajdarkids like Quetzalcoatlus and Aramborgiania possessed elongated, graceful necks designed for delicate probing movements, Hatsagopteryx developed something radically different. The vertebra displays unprecedented robustness and reinforcement that initially puzzled researchers attempting to understand how such a massive structure could function in a flying animal. Examination of EME315 exposes massive muscle attachment sites and ligamentous connections far beyond what typical pterosaurs required. The occipital bones feature well-developed nuchal lines that served as anchor points for the transversospinalis muscles which control head and neck extension and flexion. These muscular attachments could support enormous loads and resist powerful impact forces that would destroy the delicate neck structures found in other Ajdarchids. The bone architecture itself tells a story of evolutionary adaptation to extreme mechanical stress. The vertebral construction includes thick cortical bone walls and internal struts that create a structure resembling a biological battering ram rather than a flexible probing instrument. The bottom surface of the neck vertebra measured 0.16 to 0.24 inches thick compared to less than 0.10 inches in other giant Ozdarchids like Aramborgiania. This spongiose internal framework provides exceptional strength while maintaining the hollow pneumatic construction necessary for flight. The thick bone walls contrast sharply with the more delicate vertebrae of related species, suggesting that Hatsagopteryx operated under completely different biomechanical constraints than its relatives. Comparative measurements reveal the most striking feature of Hatsagopteryx's anatomy, its dramatically shortened neck. While Arnimburgiania's comparable vertebrae measured 8.7 feet collectively, Hatsagopteryx's would have measured only 4.95 feet for the same vertebral segments. This abbreviated neck skeleton was approximately 4.9 feet long, representing just 50, 60% the length of what would be expected for a giant Ozdarkid of its size. The shortened architecture concentrated structural strength into a compact framework capable of delivering devastating strikes without compromising stability. Biomechanical modeling demonstrates that this fortress-like neck design could withstand the mechanical stresses of delivering powerful downward strikes without suffering structural failure. The enhanced muscle attachment sites and overall robust construction suggest that Hatsagopteryx could generate and absorb significant forces during predatory encounters. The strength of the neck appears excessive, even accounting for the pterosaur's massive skull size, indicating that additional loads from big prey items and violent foraging behaviors contributed to these boosted structural properties. The reinforced cervical series enabled this pterosaur to transform its enormous skull into an effective weapon system. Rather than relying on precise manipulation and careful probing like other Ozdarkids, Hatsagopteryx could deliver bone-crushing blows capable of subduing substantial prey items. The robust neck structure supported a 1.6-foot-wide jaw that required exceptional strength to operate effectively during hunting activities. These anatomical modifications represent a complete reimagining of pterosaur body architecture. Evolutionary pressure reshaped fundamental aged Darkid design principles to exploit the unique ecological opportunities available on Ha Edge Island. 
The fortress neck had transformed Hatsagopteryx into something unprecedented, a pterosaur that had abandoned the delicate feeding strategies that defined its lineage. Most Ajdarchids employed delicate feeding strategies using their long necks for careful probe feeding in shallow water or soft sediments. They would insert their beaks into muddy substrates to extract small fish invertebrates or other aquatic prey with surgical precision. These pterosaurs functioned as aerial herons relying on finesse and timing rather than brute force. Hatsagopteryx abandoned this entire approach, developing predatory methods that would have been impossible for its gracefully built relatives. The massive skull reached lengths of 8.2 to 9.8 feet, creating a head that dwarfed even the largest theropod dinosaurs. This enormous cranium housed jaw muscles powerful enough to generate crushing forces that could disable substantial prey items with a single strike. The distinctive groove at the jaw articulation allowed the mouth to achieve an exceptionally wide gape, enabling the pterosaur to engulf prey items far larger than what typical pterosaurs could manage. The robust beak structure differed dramatically from the slender probe, like beaks of other Ajdarkids instead resembling a biological club, capable of delivering devastating blows. The dwarf dinosaurs of H. Edgy Island provided perfect targets for this hunting strategy. Zalmox's measuring 6.6 .6 to 13.1 feet in length represented substantial meals that required aggressive tactics to subdue. Juvenile titanosaurs like Magurosaurus offered even larger prey opportunities with body masses that would challenge any predator on the island. The reinforced neck structure allowed Hatsagopteryx to deliver rapid, forceful head movements that could bludgeon these prey animals into submission before they could escape or mount effective defensive responses. This smash-and-swallow technique maximized feeding efficiency by allowing the pterosaur to consume large chunks of meat in single gulps. Rather than spending time manipulating prey or extracting small food items, Hatsagopteryx could process substantial portions of its victims quickly and efficiently. The wide gape facilitated swallowing prey pieces that would have been impossible for other pterosaurs to handle reducing feeding time and minimizing exposure to competitors or environmental hazards. Flight capabilities provided crucial advantages for this terrestrial hunting strategy. Hatsagopteryx could patrol extensive territories from above using elevated vantage points to locate potential prey animals across the island's varied landscapes. The combination of aerial reconnaissance and ground-based killing power created a predatory system that dominated both vertical and horizontal dimensions of the ecosystem, establishing this pterosaur as the undisputed apex predator of its isolated world. The engineering behind Hatsagopteryx's flight capability defied conventional wisdom about what massive animals could achieve in the air. Paleontologists initially theorized that such specialized terrestrial hunters had sacrificed their aerial abilities entirely becoming too heavy and robust to maintain powered flight. The combination of that enormous skull, reinforced neck architecture, and overall muscular build appeared to violate every principle of efficient flight design that governed other flying animals. Detailed biomechanical studies by researchers like Witten and Habib revealed a different reality entirely. Giant pterosaur wing bones possessed exceptional bending strength that far exceeded what was necessary for simple gliding. The humeri of these creatures displayed resistance to structural failure up to three times greater than comparable bird bones. This enhanced strength came from diaphyses that expanded at dramatically greater rates as body size increased, creating wing supports capable of handling the enormous stresses generated by 32.8 to 39.4 foot wingspans during active flight. Launch mechanics presented another engineering challenge that these pterosaurs solved through unique anatomical adaptations. Rather than relying on running takeoffs like modern birds, Hatsagopteryx achieved flight through quadrupedal vaulting motions. Powerful forelimb muscles propelled the animal upward by pushing off from a four-legged stance generating the initial velocity needed to become airborne despite weighing several hundred kilograms. The pterosaur's bone microstructure maintained the hollow pneumatic construction characteristic of all flying vertebrates. These air-filled chambers provided structural strength while minimizing overall weight, creating a framework that could support both devastating ground attacks and sustained aerial locomotion. Flight capability offered tremendous advantages for territory patrol prey detection, from altitude and rapid escape from dangerous situations across the island's varied terrain. Hatsagopteryx thambema 
was a massive pterosaur in an unparalleled evolutionary experiment, a supreme island apex predator that merged the grace of flight with brutal terrestrial efficiency. Its unique adaptations along with the diverse hunting strategies seen across Osdarchid pterosaurs show that their evolution was far more complex and varied than previously believed. This extraordinary fusion of aerial and terrestrial dominance ended 66 million years ago with the KPG extinction. Don't let the wonders of paleontology end here. Hit that subscribe button and follow our channel for more amazing stories from the ancient world.